to kick things off as part of the NHL's all-time top 100, joining Gord Stelic, John Shannon, and Scott Morrison on Hockey Central at noon. Daryl Sutherland, congratulations, Daryl. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, it was a great weekend, and uh, certainly honored to be a, a part of it. We, we, we're, we're, we're just saying it was really a great event to watch, the simplicity of it, you know, just the genuineness of it. You've been a part of certain events when you're honored. What was it like being out there? Well, first of all, um, when Gary Bettman had called me about six, seven weeks ago, uh, you know, I was very touched and uh, I don't know, to get the call. And then I was thinking, what was it going to be like when we all got together? Well, it didn't disappoint any of us. It was so nice. They, they did the gala uh, on the Friday night, so we're all there. You know, we, we had a, a kind of alumni lounge here at the hotel, so you get to see a few guys there. But when we were all together in the green room getting ready to go on stage in our different the different eras, uh, it was pretty nice. I mean, everybody is so uh, respectful and appreciative of just the whole the whole idea of being a part of the top 100. And, you know, the 100th anniversary of the celebration of the National Hockey League, it was very touching. And then how they did it, uh, um, you know, yesterday at the, the game, introducing us all in our jerseys, it was pretty cool to be with Boria and Frank Mahalaj and Dave Keanu's lease out there and, uh, you know, the few lease that weren't there. Hey, very, very moving for all of us, and I'm sure the fans too. So, Daryl, uh, you're, you're a hockey fan. You're like the rest of us. Um, who is the one player or a couple of players in the 100 that you had you did not know uh, that uh, you came away saying, "Hey, that guy's a neat guy." Well, you know, uh, I knew most of them kind of through my era and a little bit before, just from from being at different events. But uh, you know, it was it was that was the first time I had met Sidney Crosby. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd heard and people had come up to me at a number of occasions and said when Sid was playing junior hockey, he'd scored seven or eight points in a game, and his teammates had called him Daryl all the time. And apparently, <laughs> he'd throw Daryl inside his glove cuff. So, um, and that would kind of continuously happen. So when I saw him, I went over, "Hey, Daryl, how you doing?" And then he started laughing. He says, "Yeah, it's amazing." You know, everybody you know calls him Daryl. So that was kind of cool. Uh, one guy that uh, I've always respected right from day one and watching him play and admired him, and then he was one of the, the top sixers, Jonathan Tave. So met him and his parents. And, you know, very these guys are very humble and respectful and just, you know, what you what I like in a, in a player and a person, you know, and uh, that, that was pretty pretty cool. Daryl, when you're, when you're standing on that stage or you're standing on the carpet, and you're surrounded by all that greatness, um, yourself included. But what goes through your mind at a moment like that? Do you reflect back on a first game, a last game, a special? What What are you thinking? I'm just thinking how um, fortunate I feel that I was selected, I guess. Um, you know, I look at, uh, I was bumped into Kelly Rudy, and we were talking at the, and he said, Daryl, there's 257 guys in the Hockey Hall of Fame, so 157 Hall of Famers were not on that list, so it just kind of brings it all home to think, holy Moses! And I and I can't imagine the selection committee, and maybe you guys were on it, but how they would, you know, try to get it get it right and do it. I must, you know, you know, we all know the top fifteen or twenty, Bobby Orr's and Mario and Wayne and all those guys, but when you get down to the guy between one hundred and one and one hundred or whatever, however they do it, it must be, a, you know, it must be a difficult thing and. Uh, you know, I mean, Lanny's a, a great friend of mine, and um, what have I thought he would have been on? Of course. I mean, you know, Stanley Cup, 500 goals, all the other things, all the time, but unfortunately, he he wasn't. So I really felt like it was uh, it was pretty pretty honored and special that I was selected to be one of the guys. You know? Was it a good thing, Daryl, that they didn't actually rank the players? <clears throat> Well, I think it, it, it's good. I mean, I asked Gary Bettman that question when he had called me, and, oh, are they going to say what number you are? And he said, Daryl, we're just going to – you're one of 100. And I, I understand that completely. When I get out and I get asked a question, who do I think was the greatest player ever? Well, that's not an easy question to answer because you don't want to offend anybody. You have the respect for all the, the great players, Gordy, Bobby Orr, you know, Mario Wayne. So um, I think it would have just probably created some unnecessary controversy. Uh, and I think we all uh, respect and appreciate it that hey, you're just one of the, the 100 and, and kind of leave it that way, you know? My recollection of you, Daryl, goes back to our time at Maple Leaf Gardens with your rivalry against the Flyers, rivalry against the Islanders, and rivalry against Canadians. 
Uh, and there are a lot of Islanders, a lot of, uh, not too many flyers, enough flyers, um, and lots of Canadians. Uh, and you, you played in a, you played a very interesting time. How, and maybe this is a, a, a question about the 100. How, how do you maintain friendships with guys that used to try to beat the crap out of you? Well, you know, I'm, you know, when you're in the, the heat of the battle and you're in those series, that's, that's what it is. I mean, that's why you're who you are and why you're competitive and you respect the other guy for being that way. But, you know, you learn after that and over the years that, Hey, the, you know, you're just doing your job. They're doing your job and you respect the person, you know, obviously as a, as a player and a, a competitor and a, and a human being. So that, that doesn't come in there, but I really feel fortunate. Like I was drafted in 70, same year as Gilbert Perot, but Bobby Hall, Gordie Howe, those great players, Jean Bellavo got to play against him. I had the, the opportunity to play against those guys in the, the old buildings. Mm-hmm. And then the other side of my career, you know, Wayne Gretzky and some of those guys were, you know, Mark Messi, I got to play against those guys too. And, and here they're all there at the, this event. So I feel fortunate to, to play, have played in that era. And, and it was different back then. You know, you talk about the Philadelphia Flyers and Bobby Clark and the Broad Street Bullies. I mean, those weren't easy times to play against. And the fact that the Leafs didn't win the cup, you know, the Canadians had won four cups in the 70s in a row, and then the Islanders. I mean, we were on the verge, but just didn't quite have the, the same depth. And, you know, I've always said, like, Boreas, I mean, playing with them game in and game out in practice, I mean, he could have won the Norris Trophy. He was, as, in my mind, as good as some of those guys that won it. But because we hadn't won the cup, you know, there's a different kind of a different boat. But, uh, and I, we all understand that, but you're a great player. And it's nice to see he was part of the top 100 also. Uh, Daryl Siddler joining Gord Stella, John Shannon, Scott Morrison, hockey central at noon. Um, a lot of guys would, I think out there, there would get, love the chance to get to know Dave Keon, bit of an enigma. He would have been your captain when you broke in <coughs> and, you know, maybe talk about what he was like as a captain and also things coming full circle. Cause he was kind of the one guy that it was nice to get in the fold with all you guys as far as being honored? Well, I'm glad you, you asked that question because when I came in 70, uh, I came to the training camp, shy, quiet kid, the idea just going to work hard. But Dave Keon was the captain. He was the hardest working guy, and I admired him for that. And he'd stay out after practice. He'd practice that back end. And I'd just stay out. I wanted to stay out as long or longer than him. But really respected Davey for his competitiveness and the, the things that he had done. Obviously, he went through that difficult time with, with Harold and leaving. But in all honesty, we all know it wouldn't be complete, the 100th anniversary of the Leafs, if Dave Keon wasn't on, on, on Legends Row and had his number retired. So it was great the way it all came together this year and, and that Davey was very receptive of it all. And I had to good fortune of, uh, you know, this weekend talking to Davey kind of one-on-one. I mean, he started talking about Imlac and the times, you know, Frank was there and Frank went through his challenges like I did and, and how things were back then. But uh, in the end, uh, we all have such great uh, admiration and respect for the, the Leafs, the history, the guys that were there before us. And, and then we get lots of questions on, on, on the guys that are there now and where the Leafs are going. And we all feel good that it is going in that direction. And, and uh, there's some real positive upside to, to, to the future here for not only guys like myself who are around it, but the fans that, uh, you know, have been waiting a long time for it. So it was, it was great that way. Huh? If you spent much time with Austin Matthews, Daryl, and speaking of the future and the present and the future, I suppose, and, uh, and do you share any, any wisdom and experience with him? I haven't spent much time. I've, I've, I've met Austin a couple times just kind of in, in a brief, you know, uh, social uh, setting where, you know, it wasn't really a one-on-one thing. But um, in being on the peripheral and, and seeing him, how he handles himself, uh, you know, in interviews and and just being around, uh, you know, he gets it. He understands, uh, again, the respect that it's important to have for the game and and for your teammates and for yourself. And he's a, he's a pro. He wants to get better every day. And uh, that's what will continue to make him the, the great player he is. And, uh I mean, he's a, you know, here, here in L.A. and <clears throat> I mean, I'm around the lobby and I watch Austin and, and other guys uh, were at the same hotel as him and they're loved here, you know, and uh, they have to have those security people around them because the fans want to want to get a piece of him, get an, you know, uh, an autograph or a picture with them. And uh, but he understands all that. And, and uh, you know, the other thing that I really like with our organization, Mike Babcock does a great job at, you know, um, 
teaching these guys the right way, uh, uh, you know, day in and day out, work ethic and and uh, humility, all those sorts of things that are I think are important. So we've got some great leadership for these young guys to, you know, to take the advice and and, and grow from. You know. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, the social media is really different nowadays. But your era, Daryl, what they don't have to do nowadays is go out. Back, back back door at church in Wood Street that you had to face. Yeah. I can remember you trying to make a left turn in the car with your big fur coat on, and people are you're signing autographs that you try to make the left onto Church Street. So it was uh, you, you probably could have used that security back then from time to time. Yeah, I guess <clears throat> you know it. Um, but having said that, I think when when you when you the fans do have access to you, there's some you know there's some specialty uh, things to that. You know, I think because it's you know, become such a uh, a commodity, an autograph or a photo. Um, your your heart says you want to do it for the young kid and not think anything of it. But when you see these people that are doing it just to make some money off a guy, you know, as a player and even an ex-player, it, it kind of turns you off a bit that they try to take advantage of you. So that's what happens, unfortunately. And uh, so, you know, with these security guys around guys and the way it is, you know, you're just trying to protect them a little bit. But I think deep down, if a young kid wants an autograph or a picture, you're doing it for the right reasons, not thinking the kid's going to take it and sell it. And that's kind of what our mentality was back then, and uh, it's obviously changed because of the, the value of an autograph today. Well, being one of the 94 guys not playing in the in the NHL right now that were honored on Friday night, it it must give you a little bit of gratification. And 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 let's face it, you were a you know you were a heavy union member when when you played as well. Um, the how the game has grown and and how the business has grown and how everybody seems to be succeeding. No, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, and again, that's important for, for a guy who came in, in the 70s. The union was just starting, and obviously Alan Eagleson was our guy, and I became a vice president of the Players Union to try to learn as much and help <clears throat> help grow the business. They, You know, the, the, the better uh, quality player you had on that executive board, uh, the better you know uh, chance you had negotiating with the owner. So that was kind of the mentality back then. We're now... It's basically a lot of lawyers do it on both sides. But the game has grown. And, and I can honestly say, you know, I'm 66 years old, but one of the reasons I do uh, well outside of the game is because of the popularity of the game. You know, I mean, I'm out here in L.A. and I'm doing a few corporate suites. I'm doing a little gig for Molson's, but it's because of the popularity of the game and the way the game's grown that gives myself and other alumni guys the opportunity to, you know, to still make a, a half decent living at um, you know just being a part of the game and and, and all of it. So uh, I really appreciate that. 